Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration between the team here at the New Art School and Design the Ducks podcast. Our guest today is Louise O'Boyle. Welcome, Louise. Hi. Thank Hello. you for having me. Oh, Hello. Wonderful, wonderful for you to be here. So, uh, we're living in these very interesting times and uh, full of disruption and full of change. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, well, at, uh, currently I am head of Belfast School of Art at Ulster University. Um, I'm also a practicing artist and uh, primarily while my background is sort of as a maker within sort of ceramics and textiles, sort of mixed media work, um, I've actually kind of meandered into sort of working more digitally and um, working in different ways. I'm very interested in the link between arts and health and also looking at uh, different ways in articulating people's views and um, experiences of life through visual narratives. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. So tell us about uh, your work, uh, what you're currently doing and your projects. Yeah, so, um, well, obviously during this current um, pandemic, my uh, main focus has really been as uh, as a head of the art school is really looking at how we support those other artists and designers that are not only going through their education but um, obviously our tutors so that has been if you like all I've been living and breathing over the past few months um, however I suppose in some ways it has brought a lot of things home to me about how we work how we um bring up people into our um, dif different disciplines, into our practices. And, you know, a lot of the ways in which I have had to maybe adapt some of my approaches through the years of my own personal practice. So, for example, um, like I said at the start, I was a ceramicist, um, but I damaged my hand, which meant I can't work with clay anymore. And so I had to kind of look at different ways of, you know, how do I do that? And that's where I kind of got into digital work. But at the same time, I still love to draw, I still love to make, but I've had to adapt in different ways. So it's been quite interesting seeing how we, in these extremely challenging times, how we learn to navigate our ways. And I think that's where it's really brought home to me the fundamental role of an art school within mm -hmm. our society. Mm -hmm. And um, what all those skills that we sometimes take for granted that we are embedding within um, the education of our artists and designers and makers and creative thinkers, but actually how they kind of equip us to deal with these very uncertain times in, in more ways than the obvious. You know, it could be just something that even just that building that resilience, that way of learning can actually help with our well-being during these uh, times, as well as sort of the impact that we can have in the society around us. Mm. Mm. Tell us how you got into education. I never planned to get into <laughs> education. It was um, by 100% wasn't something I was interested or never thought I was interested in. Um, after I had done my uh, master's, I was um, doing a lot of public artworks and working uh, on like large scale commissions. And then as part of that, I was asked to do some things working with different communities. And um, I then find myself getting really involved with working with different community groups. I started working a lot with quite marginalized groups within society, those kind of, you know, hard to reach um, people. And I found that so fascinating. Um, I'd always been interested in sort of social justice issues and the human rights, um, you know, what we are. And I just find it's so fascinating, sort of the impact of how the way I saw things as an artist and I, I always I, I always find this quite difficult to define myself as an artist because I kind of see myself a little bit more as hybrid because I was always interested in design I was interested in looking at different ways of problem solving and, and finding things out from different people and I found that that approach really helped me whenever I was working then with um, engaging with people who found it difficult to kind of articulate their voice in different ways and then from that, I started, um, I got quite interested and passionate about the power of education, um, not only within sort of those community settings, but with, you know, it being a real passport to helping you live a better life. And by that, I don't mean just in an economic or a money way. 
in that, uh, you know, I am very much passionate of that there's ways in which you can learn things can help you be a better person, a better parent, a better carer, you know, a better person within our society. Mm -hmm. So that's how I kind of got into education. And then I found that the more and more I was working sort of with um, students sort of at just post-primary level, then working within a university. And um, I just became a real nerd then and started really being interested in what we can do and how we can kind of communicate with people and, you know, ways in which um, education and learning happens. So mm. I kind of fell into it and then I just kind of kept running. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the situation we're, we're, we're dealing with right now and how, uh, I mean, the question that's on my mind very much and, and through this remote uh, remote teaching is how can we uh, preserve certain things? How can we get that atmosphere, you know, that experience? And how yeah. can we use that into improving uh, what, what we have to do at the moment? Yeah, I think because of the current crisis, we, every one of us was thrown into a situation that, you know, whether we were prepared or not, that's what we had to do. And um, while, yes, there may be some elements of how we can communicate and learn within that digital realm and that remote aspect, I think what definitely this experience for us all has highlighted is the power and the need for the face-to-face, -face, the, the value of our studios, our workshops, that peer learning, the things that only happen when you're together. And I think... Um, I, it was a colleague, I think about Dave White at uh, UAL had, in, in a webinar had sort of said something about we need to separate the digital from the crisis. Mm -hmm. And I think that's quite fundamental. Um, of course, there are some elements that have really thrived with, um, and there's quite innovative practices. And even from my colleagues I'm hearing back with, we're definitely kind of going to do it this way for that. I really love the way we've done this. That's really worked. Um, but at the same time, there's other ways where parts of the curriculum have now, it's so, well, we always thought it was, that would never work, you know, uh, online. It's now, of course, it will never work. I think it's one of those things like you, you can watch all the YouTube videos in the world about how to throw a pot, but until you actually do it and your brain and your hands and your eyes are kind of coordinating and understanding and feeling that there's, that, that can never be, um, that experience, that way of learning can never be um, really fully understood and learnt um, within us. So, and that's just one example. Obviously, there's ways in which, you know, as much as possible, you can try to kind of give tasks and feedback. But I think it's really about being very aware of that's only one part, and especially within our disciplines, within art and design, um, even those that are you know, would appear to be much more um, uh, computer-based, um, like our animation or games design, those kind of, or interaction design, even from their students, they're really missing those face-to-face, uh, -face, working within studios, being within the art school, um, knowing that they, you know, there is a lot to be said about the physical um, environments in which we work. So I think while, yes, remote and working separately is there are some things, there are other areas which we cannot and will never be able to and should never be able to because actually it's not appropriate um, to just say, oh, well, you can do that. That will easily translate into this different, you know, mode of communication. I don't think that's the fact. And I actually think when the feedback from our students is that's, that's, what's, that's what's happening. You know, we can presume, if we like, what whatever we like about what we think our students are learning, but we need to make sure we're always talking to them and not just assuming, you know, oh, I think the students like this or I think the students are learning from this. Um, so that's, I think that's the thing that's really come out very strongly for me. Absolutely, because it's, I've, I have, what I have found is that there is this in-between, you know, things actually happen it's between a brief or a, or a project and the final, or, you know, what you, what you see. Uh, so it seems that uh, this method, this method that we're using now, has highlighted that it's it's almost impossible. It's, it's not it's yes. to to um, 
to interfere, to interfere, to to teach, to uh, have have an effect in that process of all the in between stages, especially uh, in design and uh, visual communication. So yeah, I, so. yeah, and no, and that's what I was going to say. I think one of the other very key things to remember is that teaching is more than just that. I speak, you listen. Um, when students are within the studio, when they're working, even as a tutor, walking around the studio, Absolutely. sometimes you can pick up on the mannerisms where you can see somebody looks like they're struggling. You can sort of tell from their body language and stuff that maybe, and then, you know, I actually think they need a bit of, you know, are you all right? How's it going? You know, that's, you know, and those kind of, or even when, say, someone in the studio is having a talk with a tutor and someone overhears that. And, you know, so there's all those kind of very sort of incidental, but so valued. And that is so core to our curriculum delivery. And that's what I, I find quite challenging sometimes when you hear about what, what's your contact hours, what's your teaching hours, what does teaching mean with an art and design? What is it this? What is it that? It's more than delivering a lecture. It's more than doing a group crit. Um, it's those additional things that sometimes can be the real spark and can be the real catalyst to moving someone's learning on. And I think, again, that is, you know, being in the studio, being part of that community has so much, that is an integral part of our education and the way we educate and the way we learn. Mm. So I th I, th I think fundamentally that has so driven, I think that's been so highlighted as a thing that's been missed, if you like. And I think we do need to talk about that. We do need to be very strongly um, advocating for the fact that um, it's not that we all just sit about and have a chat, you know, and drink coffee. It's not. You know, there's, you know, you can't just suddenly go A plus B equals C. You know, you learn that, you learn this then therefore that makes you a great designer. It's not, it's, there's so much more to that. There's the understanding of what happens and things around people, so. Absolutely. I mean, uh, there's a question about, you know, how could we do uh, design, art and design education differently, you know, about replacing and removing. But this, this question is almost uh, becoming a different kind of, uh, it takes down a different meaning. But uh, how, if you, could, if you could sort of do more, structural changes, what, what would you do differently? There may be a list. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one of the key things, and I suppose this is something as um, in my role at the currently within the school, mm -hmm. is I sometimes feel like I um, want to act very much as a filter between what's happening within university education and the external and internal pressures that schools are under right down to the lecture in the program where it's all about um, your staff student ratio, your, your retention figures, your first, second, two ones, all this kind of stuff. And while all of that obviously is all um, relevant, makes sense, you've got to, it's all part of that sort of reflective process. Part of me also thinks that in some ways, we're looking at the problem from the wrong, or not the problem, but the, the, the whole, if you like, action from the wrong point of view. We're looking at focusing on what's the outcomes instead of thinking sometimes, actually, do you know what? If you allow your team to have a bit of space to um, really test things out, to not feel so um, under pressure or overlooked, you know, that's how innovation grows. We wouldn't do it without. Sometimes I find we, even with our own um, staff teams, we're doing things we would never say to do with our students. You know, we wouldn't say, you know, you should bring in all your students and say, I want everyone here to get an A and I don't care what you do to get that. You know, there just seems a disjointed nature between what our university structure and sector is saying and what we are expecting Um our graduates to come out with, but at the same time, we need them to be really innovative, creative um, thinkers. We need them to look at problems differently. So I think in my current role, what I'm really kind of passionate about doing is, is really enabling and empowering staff um, to really think of ways in which 
they can sort of develop and test things out and try things differently. But at the same time, linking back to, you know, our students aren't customers. Mm, mm, um, mm, mm. And like I said before, like the way I see them is they're apprentice. Mm. They are starting on journey. They are part of our community. They are um, there. They have a very distinct and a perspective on what's happening that we don't hold. You know, uh, an 18, 19 year old, early 20 year old has a completely different understanding of the world. It's a different world than when I was a long time ago, a 20 year old. You know, I can't sort of turn and say, well, when I was your age, because we're in a completely different mm. you know, context. Mm. They, they have different, a huge amount of different pressures. Um, there's lots of things happening differently for them. And we need to understand that. But also we need to see that actually what they have got to offer curriculum and their perspective is so interesting is something that we should be really engaging with so obviously yes I'm very interested in the idea of having them as co-creators and what we're doing but also as critical friends in some sense you know that obviously the student voice and that's a key part of all universities but it's actually are we really is that just like a, a tokenistic you know way in which we are engaging our students or is there something that we are missing? They're a huge resource. They're bringing really interesting um, life experience. And we need to look at how that can make everything that we do better, especially given that the way our world globally seems to be evolving mm -hmm. and the changes within that. And, you know, there are huge mammoth global issues um, that will affect us all, for example, like the current pandemic. And it's actually kind of made us start to think about more about, well, what is our role in our society? What is the role that we play? And how can we really create the leaders of the future who are going to look at things in a different way? Absolutely. I mean, it's so important to look at art and design education as an apprenticeship. Uh, 100%. Because we, we, we are losing that in a, in a sense also that uh, graduates sometimes feel that you know they're ready, whereas uh, a lot of designers uh, sort of will tell you that you're beginning. You know, you also need another two or three years of, let's say, being an, an apprentice in a studio or in, yes. a, in a. So it, we expect you know them to be ready, but it's also yeah. the mindset and also the speed of of the way things are done is much faster. But at the same time, it does take. If you say you know foundation or one plus three plus three, so it would say take seven years for for an artist and designer to start discovering themselves. And I think we also seem to forget that many many ways because of the yeah. pressures. Because of the pressures. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And it's actually um, even with our students allowing them to understand that, to think that. And I think that's what, in some respects, where whenever they come to university we've had to retrain them from what they've been taught at post-primary where it's all about you know you attain this you equal that you attain that you equal that you did it you equal that and you know and then trying to retrain them that actually you are an apprentice this is a very long marathon <laughs> and it's not a it's not a hundred meter you know sprint you know you're you may at that time and even like one of the things I would say is that with some of our graduates is you know, who may turn out, I'm really disappointed. I only got this grade. I didn't get that. I'm going, you've only in your life been assessed at this point against that. You're in a professional role now. You know, it's up to you now to keep on developing that. You know, I, I personally, you know, and I even say something myself, like, you know, I think I did my most learning post degree mm. and those few years after where you really, and I'm still learning and I still of don't, course. you know, and that's that's how I see it is that this is actually I'm on this journey of learning of, of developing constantly developing my skills and um I think whenever they realize that it kind of sometimes is a bit of a a, a loosening of the restraints because they're like oh right okay so now you know and I'm saying enjoy this enjoy your time at if you're on your undergraduate because you're never going to get that kind of block of full-time you know really engaging fully with your discipline so and I do think that we have to change the narrative somewhat around this, is that you are not just going in like at one end of a machine and you're coming out transformed, like some kind of cartoon. You know, it's 
this is part of you're on a very long, if you like, what's them things called? You know, journey, moving walkway, yeah, or something, right? Feel you know, you, you've all, yes, yes, one hundred percent. And you know, you may avert, you might fall down, you might take a very long nap at some points in it, but that's fine. You know, I mean, that's that's all what we're here to do. So. You know, and I think it's it's learning that if you are passionate, and it's really about following what they're most passionate in Absolutely. and really seeing what they want to do. And, you know, I never, you know, there is no such thing, I think, as failure. If you are really following what you passionately want to do, you know, that is, you know, if you passionately want to work in a supermarket, rock on, you know, that's it. You know, if you passionately want to be a billionaire, well, go you on ahead. Do you know what I mean? But it's, it's, what you you want to make a difference in the world? You want to change your community, and um, that's what I think that our university education should be really, you know, pull, pushing those skills. Whether it's for those doing degrees or whether it's our role as a university out within our community, and doing things out within sort of and the community being in the widest possible sense. I don't mean just local; it could be global, and um, but it's really about what we do and how we sort of enact that change that we want to see in the world mm. or that the world needs of course that's so so yes i mean how can we help the students again sort of make the transition smoother or what would we sort of do especially now of course it's, it's again it's it's, it's uh, different but how can we help them uh, go more in, onto onto employment in, in a better way uh, i think uh, uh well we could all go, oh, the transferable skills they have and being yeah, aware of, of this. But actually, what I have found, and, this, and especially now because obviously with the current pandemic, our final year students haven't been able to get their annual degree show. And so what we as a school have decided is that we have committed to supporting them for the next 12 months and um, having like different events, different alternative celebrations. Um, and what we find is that actually we kind of and again it goes back to the point I was making earlier like I think we sometimes underestimate our own students mm -hmm. because of that we have started to see how they have engaged and are to find new opportunities with employers with um, out within the cultural sector with wider society they're thinking about being much more innovative and in how they use maybe um, technology to communicate to a wider audience there's a few of our students who are doing fabulous work at the minute, linking in with um, really kind of looking at ways of communicating with larger groups through whether it's through their Instagram accounts or whether it is through some of the actions that they are doing out in the community, whether it's kind of uh, creating whatever. And I, and I think that we have to kind of, I think that is fundamentally our role as a university is to allow our students to build their confidence to try things out yes of course within an art school that's fundamentally what I would say our kind of our ABC is that in an art school it's a safe environment they can challenge things they can test things they can fall down they can do something daft and um, they can really excel but we are there as a nurturing supportive environment but fundamentally what we are to do is to build their confidence to try things out to know that it's okay to try something and it doesn't work. To try something out and say, oh, actually, this is a really interesting thing. Or also to look at others and collaborate and learn from them. So like looking at quite, you know, highlighting maybe what some of our last year's graduates have done. Maybe somebody started and has now taken an aspect of what they thought was going to be their design practice has now kind of exploded as a, a separate business. And say, and then coming back in and saying, look, I never thought I was going to do this. I tried something and it really worked. So I think if we really want at this stage, and especially with it being so different within the world, if we want to kind of really support our students to do really well, what we need to do is kind of empower them. I think that has to be the, the main thing. Empower them, make them be aware of the networks that are available to them whether that's local, national or global, and really kind of give them that confidence to, to try things and to know that it's okay for something not to work and how to get back from that. I think that's the other thing. To so know how to fail. Well, I don't really think there is really anything that's failing. It's like you didn't do something, you didn't attain something. Right, well, what do you need to do next? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
How can our viewers and listeners find more about you and your work? Um, you could go to my website, which is louiseoboyle.com, or follow me on Instagram or Twitter. Um, and again, sort of link into some of our fabulous students and graduates Wonderful. through Belfast School of Arts Instagram as well. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Any last piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? Um, I think this series of podcasts is amazing. I'm very pleased, quite shocked to be asked, but because I really have really enjoyed them and I've highlighted them to students. And I think, again, even what you're doing is one of those things where we probably won't see the, or not we won't see, but, you know, the impact of what this, of hearing voices and hearing other voices in maybe different kind of communities of practice is so valuable for not only our students, but also for us as practitioners. So thank you very much, Lafaterris, for you. this, because it's really, really, really a brilliant resource. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, well, thank you. Thank you, for be thank you for being on, on the podcast. And we'll look forward to continuing the dialogue. And hopefully we look forward to seeing you as well on the uh, uh, design uh, of the design education forum on the 5th and the 6th of November that we are... Yes. Uh, Hosting. So again, the dialogue is open for that, and we are very busy planning for it. Brilliant. Thank you, Louise. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.